Welcome to Houston Art Tribe. I'm Kay Sarver, and I am here with Richard Stout. Uh, I'm very honored and excited to be here. Uh, we are in his studio, amazing studio. Um, how long have you been in, in this space? I was able to build this building, this studio, and the adjacent garage apartment mm -hmm. in 19... Uh, 67 um, when my son Stefan was born. Oh, that's a while. You it cost $15,000 and my dad's two oldest sisters um, gave me the money to do it. I was working in a garage before. So I, I, right from the beginning was working in this space. I painted the floor uh, white, a uh, couple of people I had living in the, uh, rather painting in the upstairs uh, space before mm -hmm. it was an apartment, mm -hmm. <clears throat> had put um, cotton carpets on the cotton, eight by 12 rugs on the floor, mm -hmm. and had left and so I moved them down here, and, and then later I said, well, you know, I've been doing a lot of pouring stuff, and, and <laughs> they got kind of nasty, so I said, well, mm -hmm. I just paint them white. And uh, of course, that works beautifully because it bounces the light. It does. A great skylight. Gosh, a lot of history here for you all. It's a well, family. Yeah, and um, but I, everywhere I look, there's something that's important to me. Uh, okay. uh, um, girls at the drawings, the girls have made little sketches along the way, little photographs along the way, things mm -hmm. that come in and stay around. Uh, I'm interested in detail yeah yeah my mother was an accountant my oh my, my goodness. brother who went to rice when he was very young mm -hmm. uh, was a mathematician and so our growing up in our house was a little bit like uh, a little bit something like that sitcom <laughs> called big bang theory you know, <laughs> okay battling yeah. points of view yeah and in any case so um, it's interesting how that translates into your life uh, more than we realize. I well, my mother very much pride, prided, her, prided herself in being able to do her job. She worked for the county in the tax department. Mm. And uh, she'd come out late some night, eight or nine o'clock, and you know, saying, oh, I found it. I was out of balance, 38 cents, but I found it. I found it. <laughs> of course, no one would even dream about why you'd spend hours trying to yeah. get in balance. Yeah, but to but her, that was, it was. That, that was her. So. Yeah. That had a lot to do, I imagine, with the, the attitude that I have about painting and, and, and my brother's attitude he had about math. Interesting, too, to, to take that into, well, I mean, I guess they're all forms of creativity when you think about it, but we so think about something like Well, I, I would say it's manner more than creativity, manner. Okay, because yeah, there's not a lot of creativity in math. I, I mean, so. I mean, and, and physics, yes, but you really have to struggle to get there, too. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah. Um, but math itself, yeah, that's so. Mm -hmm. Pretty cut and dry. Yeah. Two and two is two. <laughs> Four. I, I've just always been so uh, glad that you have been in Houston. I mean, you're really a Texas icon, and probably beyond that, honestly. No, just there. <laughs> just Texas. I don't know, you know, I'm amazed when I look at, at um, you have just like a, a legendary body of work, and I remember first seeing some of these large paintings, that I had no clue what time period when I first saw them, but I remember thinking, uh, you know, just how alive they were and how exciting the, the brush strokes and color. And, the, the great lesson I learned when I was very young, uh, and I still apply all the time, is that uh, uh, I don't like to be bored. Uh, and, and I learned this by, uh, uh, by you know, by do something that you've done before. And, and this is my big argument with my brother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, why do something that you have done before? And so I like to do it differently. Yes. And I, and I, I, therefore, no one can read my writing. Uh, and, <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> but uh, I, I grew up um, um, painting plein air outside oh. and with, with uh, members of the Beaumont Art League and, and later people who were involved with the Beaumont Art Museum mm -hmm. in the beginning. And um, they loved to have a little dicky around. 
because you know I was fun and I could do it. Yes. And, oh, show me that. Oh, I do that. I still have upstairs a few things I did, and in the house some things I did when I was an early oh, teenager. Yeah. yeah, they're not bad. And yeah. last summer uh, we went to um, San Angelo partly mm -hmm. because I wanted to um, visit with. Howard Taylor and Vicky, uh, don't worry about that. Oh, okay. And uh, 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 um, and um, uh, Berthold, Vicky Berthold, uh, who is um, the secretary of Caseta, Caseta being the um, Center for Study of Early Texas Art. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, so Arthur and I decided that we'd go out there, drive out there, and. Uh, it's been three or four days, mm -hmm. which we did, and paint every day because it's really hot oh. in San Angelo, Texas in, Good in Lord August and July. <clears throat> yeah. Really hot. So it was, it was a little tough. We went out there in the morning and mm -hmm. had a good time. San Angelo is an interesting town. And I did four paintings. This is oh. one of them oh. Oh. Um, oh. On the, along the Concho River. Uh, the uh, Concha River flooded very badly back in the 20s, I guess it was. It flooded the downtown and so on. So they spent a lot of time um, channeling it, building dams and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. So through the middle of San Angelo, the Concha River is in some ways not unlike the Riverwalk in, in, oh. in uh, San Antonio. Huh. It, it, quite different. Yeah. And, and uh, I did this painting in a downstream area a little bit, mm -hmm. but the other three paintings that I did right behind the museum at the Concert River, uh, mm -hmm. uh, at the Museum of San Angelo, and I've since given them to the museum to be used for fundraising. If they crank up some of their trustees to give a little bit more money. How Take wonderful, this. yes. So this, this one I'm going to um, so you stood out there doing this, or did you did you get do photos and then do it? <laughs> no, I mean I I just I mean, thinking of the heat. You know? There's there, a <coughs> use for a photo as a re research tool in painting, but to rely on a photo is, mm. is making love to your sweetheart on the telephone. You know? That's great. <laughs> that. Anyway. Oh, that's great. Well, you can definitely see the life in those. Well, I'm going sure. to um, give, get that frame shortly and give it to the Art League. Uh, it's the only thing I give anything, the only place that uh, uh, charitable and it does auctions. Yes, yes. I learned a long time ago, that, and I've all, always given Art League plein air pieces uh, of yes. the city because I can't normally sell those things. You do something like plein air, you want to make it so, oh, you're there. You're there. You're, well, mine. When I do a plein air, often it's uh, it's um, a little disturbing. Oh goodness! You're okay. there, but you really don't want to be. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 So. Um, okay. But not always. You know, anyway. mm -hmm. um, so it, 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 doing plein air makes and having that as a history mm -hmm. keeps you very active on the canvas when you're doing a painting mm -hmm. and. Um, Uh, the, of, of late, maybe one out of every four paintings in the last eight months has been a painting of something in this neighborhood uh, that is a little disturbing because the, this neighborhood's undergoing a lot of changes. Yes. And I hear it from my neighbors, many of, who I've had for, you know, 60 years or more. Mm -hmm and from other very close friends as I walk around I talk with Vinnie Lusk who says, oh, see that you know, oh, yeah. don't have any light anymore and, and, and all that and, and more trash and um, yes. uh, yeah. so trying to show that shift and change which I understand probably grows on glacially most places but mm -hmm. more rapid in some places um, it's disturbing I can understand why um, paintings on gentrification, for instance, yes. uh, uh, movies on gentrification have become yes. an issue yes. and that sort of thing because it seems to happen so suddenly. It, especially in Houston. Yeah. Yes, 
I mean, I, 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 some of my friends in New York and uh, called and said, oh, after the flood, and said, are you okay? Oh, okay. He said, no, no, not even close. And, and uh, I said, well, uh, well, well, we had about 12 inches a night in my neighborhood for three nights in a row, and, but we didn't flood. Yeah. And I said, one part of town, uh, they had 56 inches of rain yes. that night, and, yes. and uh, that's more than it's ever rained before or anywhere. <laughs> and and, and uh, well, is that very close to I said, no, no, remember Houston is about the size of Rhode Island, and metropolitan Houston is about the size of Massachusetts. Yeah. <laughs> and that puts it in perspective. And, yes, and, and, it does. And as we like to say <laughs> with our accent, and, and you know, Texas is bigger than France. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a factor, and if you yes, haven't yes. read uh, Lawrence Wright's book, God Save Texas, you might. I will look for that. I have it in there. Michael Tracy left his copy here about three months ago when mm -hmm. I broke my arm. He happened to be coming and staying, and, and I think he didn't want to be to her city longer, so he just stayed two nights, but left that. He's been back. Uh, Michael Tracy, by the way, the painter who, um, sculptor who um, works in San Ignacio, Texas, and have saved the um, historic structures of that part of Texas, mm -hmm. uh, including the Urebi Trevino Fort, from being lost with his foundation. And mm. I was watching Viva Zapata the other night, and a good part of Viva Zapata's filmed in San Ignacio. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And um, in any case, uh, he did this, he did have a drawing and a sculpture in there, and he did my bed, the table. Oh my gosh. Oh. And so... Um, How often do you get into the studio? Uh, every day. Uh, I mean, yeah. the door's open. And yeah. I've, I've often teased about it, wanting to have a set of bed bars there. Yes. Because yes. it starts to roar, and yeah. you don't want it to kill you. No. Two weeks ago, <clears throat> yesterday, I drove over uh, to the Black Lab, I mean to the uh, Black Hole, I normally I walk over mm -hmm. because it's just a block away. And um, I parked and I got out of the car and looked up at my neighbor's house <laughs> on the corner and um, <clears throat> I know this couple. You know, they're, he's, uh, he's younger than my son, he's a big guy, mm -hmm. uh, and his wife, they have a son who's at post school also, and um, Edgar uh, oh. completely rebuilt this little cottage that was sold to him by my neighbors behind me, Okay. who have two special needs boys who are um, both older than Edgar, both older than my son. Mm -hmm. um, and I, there is something that very vulnerable about I know. that little house. Yes. So I immediately started uh, a drawing. Oh. Oh. Oh yes. Oh my God. Oh, that's it. That's this piece. And finally, beginning. And this is what's happening, really. And I, I was telling you earlier about Mr. Hed, uh, uh, Shidlaw and uh, Mr. Helwig in Cincinnati giving me sort of basic chops of painting mm -hmm. uh, when I was a late teenager. And then when I went to the Art Institute, a Chicago uh, School of the Art Institute, um, I mean, it was big time because it's easily the best art school in the United it, States at the time. I, I believe it easily. still is, isn't it? Mm, I, believe, I don't or? know if there is one now. Oh, gosh. I, I, uh, I don't know if there is one. Yeah. Uh, the university has gotten better, and then the university has gotten entrenched. Mm -hmm. And there, now, it's a, now, now it's all a money deal. It's not an art deal. It's a money yes, deal. Yes. And that all happened back in the late 60s. In any case, okay. uh, I went and... The teachers I had were, in every way, superb. Mm -hmm. um, my design teacher had been taught by Laszlo Mahodinaj, who was the Bauhaus uh, 
photographer who opened the um, Institute of Design, which mm -hmm. later went to uh, Illinois Institute of Technology. Uh, my first growing teacher, um, Isabel McKinnon, who had been a long time and early student of Hans Hoffman, so uh -huh. we learned all about push school. Mm. And my painting teacher, Paul Vigart, had been a student of Paul Clay's in Berlin at the Bell House. And, uh, and when you went to class, you either had to pass between two full-size casts in plaster painted black of the Garamalata by Donatello and the Il Colioni by uh, 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 Verrocchio. Mm -hmm. uh, on either side, as you went into your downstairs classes, or under a 23-foot tall Ascension of the Madonna by El Greco. Oh my gosh. And so it's like, mm, boy. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. Set no the kidding. mood. <laughs> this is what you're doing. And, and between those teachers and the energy of the students, which was very high, knowing that we were in, in the place, yeah. um, the only other place in, in the whole country that was anywhere close to that was closing up at that time was Black Mountain College. Black Mountain College did everything. Uh, it was hidden. People didn't really know Where about it. Where was it located? Uh, outside of Asheville, North Carolina. Oh my gosh. It was put together by a couple of professors from Rollins College in the late 30s. Then when the uh, 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 GI Bill came in, they uh, hired Joseph Albers mm. to come as be the director and he made mm -hmm. Black Mountain College uh, the birthplace of modern art in America. Wow. And because the people that went to school there are Jasper Johns, Robert Rauschenberg, uh, uh, Cy Twomley, um, oh. uh, um, um, Merce Cunningham, uh, John Cage, oh, um, um, uh, John Chamberlain. Oh my gosh, what a list. And on and on and on and on, poets and so on. And oh. uh, I didn't know about Black Mountain until I was a senior at the Art Institute, but by that time it had closed. Yeah. And then I met some of the, I met some of the people, of course, you know the others. And, mm -hmm. But aside from that, it, the Art Institute was the only other place. Wow. And um, the universities were, uh, particularly Yale, uh, were beginning to make some Good moves, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and the uh, regional universities like Texas uh, were getting as good a people as they could get. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, my family wanted me to stay in Texas, and I said, "No, I'm going to go do it better than that." So I did. You work in series generally, or is it they stand alone kind of pieces? They just the mood of your moment, or? How does that come about? Uh, well, um, I have a refrigerator. It has the usual things like that I get used that I use up. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't. Except for cheese, I don't keep anything in there long term. Yeah. yeah. If uh, I have eggs, I'll get six eggs. I'll use them up right away. Then I, I, I have some leftovers, but I really use up all my leftovers. I'm one of those people that made potato peel soup. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm extremely um, frugal. Frugal, yeah. And so uh, I, the, the degree to which I'm frugal is how I squeeze every idea. Okay. Uh, I don't like to do the same painting twice. I mean, sometimes there will be a beat that will stay there for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, for about two years, all the paintings in and around the, my contemporary arts museum show in 74, 75. They sort of like hung together in a way. There, okay. there might be a, a palette of work. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, I mean, there are times that I just can't get enough of uh, uh, baby lime beans or whatever. <laughs> right. No, and, that I makes mean, sense I, just, that. Every, I could have baby lima beans every day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but um, 
That's a good way to put it. I, it makes sense. Uh, and then I don't want it. Don't want it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe a little bit revisit. Maybe like oh, okay. Go. And it's interesting to me because like this is just coming from my perspective. Uh, recently, just looking at your body of work, massive over the years. Uh, just there. I don't even want to use the word continuity, uh, but I do see some underlying connection for sure that it's your work, at least most of it. I don't have a style. I do have a yeah. general manner. You know, okay. You know, yeah. But I don't have a style. Yeah. Uh, Edward Mayo, uh, the man who introduced me to my wife uh, back in '64, finally said, you know, I finally understand what you're doing. <laughs> anyway. That's great. Uh, I, I think the material in the recent last tire sit-downs was accurate. Yeah. And how I got to know the dealers here. And I was fortunate to have some very good dealers here, some very good agents, lovely mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And even lovely people have problems, have difficult times, yes. certainly Catherine did. And Bill Graham, who died, terrible. And then there are other people for various reasons that, you know, you just don't seem to be the right kind of person that, that they really need you to be. But mm -hmm. I mean, they're perfectly agreeable with that, but don't ask for anything more than what you've got. Uh, and yeah. so uh, there are those. Yeah. And, um, but I'm very happy with my agents now. Yeah. And uh, at a time that I'm making the beginnings of final preparations, I have, most of my archives are already uh, uh, um, been dealt with. Dick Ray's yes, yeah. help me with that. But we're up to the 90s and we have to do that and the galleries can be helping on that, the gallery also. Um, most of my, Everything I have a photograph of, I, I have on my computer with some sort of comment or size, anything I have. Okay. But there have been hundreds and hundreds and hundreds oh, of books that I, don't that, that have no examples of. Is it William Reeves that, that's helping you with that archive? Yeah, uh, William yeah. Reeves, Sarah Holtz. Uh, Sarah Holtz. Uh, and uh, uh, she, uh, Sarah Holtz has a wonderful staff. Mm -hmm. uh, Love that gallery. Very, very cute. I like it too. <coughs> and um, they're, they're very much involved in the history and I, I don't think they'll let my ship sink, so to speak, at all. Yeah. I'm concerned about some of my friends who don't, I have a little cushion. Yes. And, uh, and for my life, uh, but I have a number of friends who have none. Oh, I, I and, know. Uh, no cushion at all and yeah. are hard pressed to try to keep there and the flow and do the work they need to do. It's very difficult. It's yeah. very difficult, it's very hard. Yeah, it doesn't seem to get any easier these days. But, yeah. I mean, Dick Ray really never had very much money, but he had taken a tube of cadmium red, which is $45 and whatever, like this. Yeah. The tube of cadmium red will last me for a half a year. Yeah. <laughs> but he just, uses the whole, yeah, the that's expensive. Yeah. And you couldn't afford it, but yeah. you get it. Yeah. What a guy. See, you you taught for a number of years. Um, University of Houston being... 30 years at U of H and nine years <clears throat> in the museum school. Yeah, that's before. a lot of years. How did that, I mean, maybe it's obvious, but how did that influence or affect your, your uh, ability to paint and... I didn't affect that at all. Um, um, I mean, teaching is one thing, and painting is quite a different thing. Yes. And uh, I was I felt very. I, I, and I'm not a traditional teacher. I don't teach a style mm -hmm. or a way. I once again teach a manner. Mm -hmm. And and I've been blessed by having having had some very very bright people in my classes. And what we talked about was, we talked about composition and all those things but uh, that you just have to know about whether you do them or not. Mm -hmm. But what we talked about is moving forward in their work and where in the case of someone like Julian, 
I introduced him first to Dick Ray, then I introduced him to Michael Tracy, and Michael Tracy took him on to Galveston where he met his friend Bobby Wilson, who mm -hmm. had a summer house down there, who introduced him to his old friend Joe Glasgow, who showed Julian how the work ropes really work in New York, and ah. that's how Julian made it. Yeah. And Julian made it big time. His work really shows up as being really good. I saw in Berlin a number of years ago of painters of the 80s and showing with all the, the European group of the, at the same time, the uh, 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 the, the new expression, Neue Expressionismus uh, group mm -hmm. out of Berlin. And um, Julian was clearly the strongest. Wow. Kind of nice to know. Still yeah. is. I know. I I when I um, talked with Earl Staley, your friend, he did say that in the thirty years of teaching, he's that he knows of there were only two of his students that went on to be working artists. Yeah. You find that to be. I've had a lot. Ah. David Caton, who shows at William Reeves and who does figurative. West Texas landscapes as well as anyone who's ever done them. Oh, wow, yeah. Um, um, mm. uh, Ken Mazou, who also shows at that oh, gallery, uh, um, yeah. was a student of mine. Um, mm -hmm. um, Stephen um, Murphy, the sculptor, was a student of mine. Uh, Benito Huerta was a student of mine. He's up in North Texas, uh, uh, in uh, Arlington. Uh, they're around. Yeah, yeah. that's and, encouraging. Uh, they're all different. <laughs> they don't look like me, and that's good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> but, you know, sometimes they just, they're good. You spend a lot of time with them. They go off to New York or wherever, and you never hear from them again. Yeah. They don't have yeah. all, I mean, occasionally I get, <clears throat> hello, I'm here. <laughs> Can you help me? And, <laughs> I was going to say, or they either get swallowed up by, the oh, well, I've, 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 I have just been moving some of those people onto a book called The War of Art. Oh. Uh, which, the War of Art is inside you, which means that you really aren't doing it. Wow. You would like it to come to you as a gift, but no, you've got to do it. And yeah. so you have all these reasons to resist the getting up and doing it. And yes. you've got to get over that. Boy. And it work. Like you're speaking to me personally because I, mean, I, I, mean, I, no. I, I broke my arms a little over three months ago and my apartment just filled up with stuff that needed to be done. Stacks, yeah, yes. letters, condolences, and essentially, you know, the floor, all of those sorts of things. And, and I looked over at the work that needed to be done on my desk and said, got to do that, got to do that, got to do that. <laughs> well, I, I I started with one, and each day I did one thing. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Do you get out to look at local art very much? Or? I always go to see my <clears throat> friends who are having exhibitions. Oh, I wonderful. feel bad if I don't. Yeah. They've always come to mine. I always go to theirs. Yeah. I do go around and 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 um, see the new stuff. There's some work I, I've seen recently which I think is particularly good, for one reason or another. There. Recently, a show at um, maybe currently up at uh, Carrie Emmon, uh, oh. a, a recent graduate uh, from the University of Houston, did small paintings. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, Those the yes. Kind just of, extraordinary. Lovely. Yes, I thought so. Yeah. Really beautiful. Yes. But um, yeah, I look. Yeah. And I think it's a very good it's a very good scene here. There's a lot to look at. And um, um, I, I mean, I have a, a piece, top card up there is uh, um, uh, Lovey Oliver, uh, who has a show opening on the 28th, I think, at Lawndale. Uh, yes. She is a <coughs> barista at uh, Black Hole. Isn't that great? And uh, um, you know, they're. A lot of people around doing very interesting work. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Jonathan Paul Jackson was on our trip down to Corpus Christi. He's mm -hmm. a wonderful painter um, and uh, shows some at Reeves Gallery, but yeah. of mid 30s, but you know, real natural, real yeah. good. Um, they're out there. Yeah, I'm 
I think they so. definitely are, and there <clears throat> is a quality and an attitude which is refreshing, and particularly mm -hmm. those people who work in in more abstract modes mm -hmm. because they feel as so though they can. Mm -hmm. And uh, a user is particularly open town with regards this sort of thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that really attracted me, the things principally attracted me aside from the people and the climate, um, Lisa Van Roo, New Wing, Museum of Fine Arts, yes. was being built. <clears throat> uh, Leopold Stokowski, uh, a great con symphony conductor, was conducting our orchestra. Yeah. And there had just been first season and then the second season of opera, Houston Grand Opera, where the first season, second season, there were uh, uh, two operas by uh, Richard Strauss with sets by Jim Love. Mm. Wow. And, you and I said, well, it's possible. <clears throat> it's cheap, too. I can afford it. Yeah, yeah. And so I moved to, uh, um, I stayed with, at Preston Fraser's for about two weeks and I found this little garage apartment uh, as it turned out, next door to the James Baker house on this and that at, at, at uh, Parkway. Mm -hmm. And I walk up my steps to my little apartment, look over, and the, <laughs> there were the bakers in the backyard and having cocktails. <laughs> How That's could this great. be? That's this would never have happened in Chicago or New York. <laughs> never, never. Our Philadelphia, our Boston. Really? Yeah, yeah, I guess not. I mean, I, 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 I met these wonderful people like. Nina Cullinan and, and I'm a hawk within the first month I was here. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. if, if you're reasonably polite and you're fairly smart and and, and um, they want to know you because yeah. they want to know you and they want to help you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Alice Brown was wonderful to me. Oh my gosh. That's great to hear these Tell things. you a story back in early 60s. I just started with Meredith Long. And I had to show up and he had the, his mm -hmm. gallery on Westheimer and, uh, at that time. Mm. And, um, and she was there and, and she had just bought a painting. Uh, and uh, she pointed to, not hers, but one other, and she said, you know, signature was something. She said, Richard, we know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good, that's good story. Yeah. We know who you are. So you've seen the Houston... Uh, cultural, you know, art, it's really changed a lot. Something sure. happened in the <clears throat> mid, uh, something happened in the mid, um, um, early, early 50s, mid 50s, early 50s, mm -hmm. that changed the art world in Houston forever. Uh, not that it wasn't already in the process of doing with this, or with John and Dominique coming here. But in the early uh, 50s, yes. uh, the, John and Dominique uh, on the board of Contemporary Arts Museum Association <clears throat> yeah. uh, got the notion that, that it was really hard for the volunteer members of the institution to pull together to put a show up, which they did. And they did wonderfully well, the mm -hmm. Vincent Van Gogh show here. Right? Mm -hmm. President Fraser, uh, uh, Avachine Mears tells me about they couldn't heat the building. It was downtown at the time, oh, so the, and they had to stay with the with the paintings because someone had to be there and they couldn't afford a guard. So the trustees would spend the night on a cot in the museum, oh, my and and they would spell <clears throat> each other through the night. Mm -hmm. and, and as she would go over there, and President Bolton would get out of the cot, and she said, just warmed it up for you. Oh my God! <laughs> and, and so they would, they you know, they didn't have enough to heat to yeah. heat the old Quonset hut, which cost three thousand dollars to build the key and camera. Put the key and camera. Yeah. Uh, which they then moved to the Prudential uh, place out there behind, no, no longer Prudential, on the back of a flatbed truck, and as they passed the Museum of Fine Arts, they tooted their horn and had <laughs> champagne. <laughs> It's the kind of crazy yeah. madcap thing that wow. they did in those days. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, Henry Leela moved into that little house, and Preston Fraser took me to a party at that little house the second or the third night I was in Houston. Met everybody. Oh my gosh. Everybody. It's just like that. Wow. Different times for sure. That was yeah, twenty three. <laughs> Amazing, amazing. And you, you started teaching soon. 
a After person, a, 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 a <coughs> low college, right away, hired me right away. <coughs> oh my gosh. And uh, yeah. for nothing, but hired me. I guess he saw that, man, how you can do that? And yeah, so I had yeah. mostly lady students, some guy students, but mostly lady students, because that, at that time was pretty much what the museum school taught. Yeah. And I, I, I tell you, three or four of those women, I knew them until they died. Who, it, 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 of these people, they have no particular ax to grind, and, and and because you're reasonably nice and fairly innocent, they will do these things for you. And mm -hmm. if you just all you have to do is listen and mm -hmm. and work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really important having that community of. of and Houston has right. been a wonderful community. It really is. And it, it it is in no way pretentious. It's yeah, a, that's the thing about it that's so nice is <clears throat> in no way so pretentious. True. Unlike our sister city to the north, which yeah. has some reasons to be pretentious. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but it, yes. It, I'm, well, and I love Dallas, and, uh, but yeah. it, it, it is a bit pretentious <clears throat> more than I personally prefer. Yeah, it's kind of Fort Worth, I think, is wonderful, however. Yeah. yeah. In any case, um, yeah. This retrospective that uh, is in the Museum of South Texas in Corpus, yeah. it is coming uh, to... University of Houston University downtown, Houston. the O'Kane Gallery. And will, when will it be there? I think it'll be in October. October, okay. Uh, it, it takes them a, a while to dismantle Corpus Christi and then put it in yeah. a truck and to get it up here and open yes. it here. I talked yes. to the director a couple of weeks ago, Mark Trevinka, great guy, and I said, I'll be interested to see what, what you do, what you pick for this, because this is yeah, smaller space. It's a smaller space, yeah. yeah. And um, it's called a sense of home, correct? Did you? Oh, the, the, the people that wrote the book. Okay. Uh, okay. I, 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 just, I said, I, if you have good people, you don't tell them what to do. Yeah. And uh, there's the people that came up with that. And is the book available now? Oh, I've been impressed. Sense of home. And I said, if we do it, I want to have at least uh, uh, three different people writing, and I think there are five people that have written. Uh, Mark White, the um, uh, curator, director of the Jones Museum in Oklahoma, University of Oklahoma, mm -hmm. uh, uh, wrote a general overview. Kathy, uh, 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 Edwards, uh, uh, Robinson, Catherine, Ka Kathy Robinson, Catherine, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, wrote uh, uh, also a, a slightly different uh, Jim Edwards, uh, the historian at the University of uh, 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 Houston Baptist, wrote a piece on the sculpture, very good. Mm -hmm. David Brower, uh, who has spoken about my work before, but only written once before and doesn't consider himself a writer, wrote a very good piece. Uh -huh. And then um, um, uh, Sir. Uh, uh, Sarah Beth uh, uh, Wilson McHugh, who's the curator in Beaumont, okay. wrote an overview, okay. both holding it together, yeah. I think very good. Oh. Um, Amazing. A couple of the photographs could be better. Uh, if, if they, uh, that some, would have been something I would have kept, uh, but all of it, the idea comes from that all my, really all of my paintings have to do with where I am right now whether it's in a good place or a bad place. And the, the painting on the front, uh, uh, night fishing. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, we had a place on the bay, and uh, my, my father was a real sweet guy, but an alcoholic and mostly not there. Oh. Uh, and so my mother, who was my mother, spent a lot of time fishing at our bay house, and very often she would fish late at night. Oh. And. Uh, Uh, when this uh, person is out there fishing all alone late at night, it's not just, not just fishing, mm -hmm. not just after the fish. It could yes. be just catfish, gaff top stuff, mm -hmm. uh, uh, crab bait, but uh, other things go on. Sure. And so, um, the, the, and, and the location of our place on, on the Intercoastal Canal. Uh, the Bolivar Peninsula from High Island, which was an oil place, all the way to Port Bolivar at the far end, 20 mm -hmm. miles, 
uh, was owned by several ranches. Ah. And there was a railroad tr track that went down and mm -hmm. then over to, by railroad ferry to um, Yellowstone Island. Okay. And then there was um, no road. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, when the uh, Corps of Engineers uh, started to build the Intercoastal Canal, they condemned strips of land from the railroad north to the site of the canal. Okay. And uh, these were then later sold to the public. Yeah. And my uncle Willard Lauderdale, uh, uh, my mom's oldest brother, and uh, Willie Gilbert, an oil man in Beaumont, mm -hmm. Uh, who painted his place uh, uh, Sunny Co. Blue and Yellow. We all use blue and yellow because a lot of them yeah. used, got paint from the oil company. Oh, okay. And, uh, and uh, uh, built slips on the end of this road. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, that was in 1927 28, and then the Depression came, and he had said that. All of us should be building houses down there. Most people did in the in 28, but by 20 uh, end of 28, uh, the bust had happened, and no one could do much of anything. And if we were we were the poor part of the family. Mm -hmm. okay. So there was a, a a workman's barge, wooden workman's barge, about a quarter the size of this room, that had been pulled up on some of the fill dirt on the edge of the canal. Mm -hmm which you always wanted to be on because it was higher than the water. And, um, and so they added a, a square, 15 foot square room in front of that with 10 awnings and then a sleeping porch. And then a very, very long 200 foot pier out into the bay with Johnny halfway out. Mm -hmm. My Aunt Roxy said, Mom, where's the toilet? <laughs> Mom, I'm not gonna come down here again until there's one inside. <laughs> and, and anyway, it was 20 feet from the water and almost at water level. And so when the, sh the boats came up and down the canal, they would shine their lights looking for the buoys to yeah. be sure they were in the channel. And there were a series of fill dredged islands out in the bay, now mostly gone, mm -hmm. covered with birds, tropical birds. Wow. And uh, the, the water was. Um, Brackish. It was not was completely say, salt. Yeah. And so we had. Uh, it didn't have oysters. We had uh, uh, clams along the beach. And then after the war, the Gulf Coast Rod and Gun Club managed to cut through the pass, at rollover pass, which started to silt up everything and wash the islands away, and mm. and uh, the clams turned into oysters. And, yeah. And so anyway, all of that. Uh, the, Going to as a child, going to bed 20 feet from the water and um, maybe five feet above the water with with windows screened to almost to the floor uh. and ten awnings, and you can hear your dad and your uncles gig fishing a mm. quarter mile away and see their lights and hear their conversations. Oh wow! It's romantic. That, I that's bet. I bet. And so I always had this thing about. The tugboat's going this way and the highway going this way. Mm. Uh, then mm -hmm. you had to move. You know, moving yeah. was important. Yeah. And there was another world out there. So at an early age, I had this sense. Mm -hmm. um, I, to a certain degree, escape has something to do with this idea. Um, but uh, no matter how much you escape, you still have your home with you. Um, I suppose I've, I've read a lot, and I, I played violin for ten years back when mm. I was a kid. Mm. My brother played cello and piano, and rubbed it in. Um, and um, <laughs> we shared a room. Oh God! Oh. Oh. How much age difference? Four years. Four years. But in terms of education, more like six or seven. Uh, I failed the third grade. I wrote backwards. I mean, I wrote with my left hand and yeah. they checked this. You don't do oh. that. So I wrote backwards with, with my right, right hand. Right hand. Oh my god. And uh, my beloved teacher took me in hand, and once again, a teacher I was friendly with until Miss Zilla Linville died. We would always go over and visit with her. 
I have wonderful teachers. In any case, uh, sense of home. Home. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very. That's. I love hearing that, and I cannot wait to read it. And thank you. Oh sure. <laughs> I mm -hmm. wish that Dorothy had had something of this nature before she passed. She she was needy in this way, yeah. and and I wish that Dick had. Um, yeah. Dick was very different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what a guy. Every Friday morning, I go to artist breakfast at, at Theo's. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, there are anywhere between oh, ten and twenty of us there. Yes. And. Um, is, uh, some of our number are not well, and, uh, and, and this is a, a, a group of people who are, you know, most, mostly getting close to my age, mm -hmm. um, a few younger, um, and, and it's a contraction. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see one of these guys and his wife, uh, sometimes Earl, every, as a rule, every uh, Monday night at mm -hmm. Theo's because Harvey Bott can't hear very well, so oh. smaller group. Yeah. Yeah. Good to have that. Uh, Most friends. places don't have this. No. No. I tend to agree with you. Well, I definitely want to thank you for taking the time today to let me come visit and so that we can, you know video this conversation and, and let the viewer hear your thoughts on things and what an asset you have been to this city. That's uh, <laughs> okay. They start. I get 20, about 20 of these a day. Oh my gosh. Telemarketers or friends? Telemarketers. <laughs> I know I get them too. All right, well, thank you all for, um, for watching. Please do like, share, and subscribe, and um, see you later. Bye.